so we have a problem here for group data um, and we're just going to go through a we're going to sort of take you through an entire group data problem uh, including answering all other aspects of it a local gas station recorded 100 pur purchases of fuel one late afternoon the dollar values were sorted from smallest to largest so here you have the dollar value is going from the smallest value to the largest value and you know you have all the numbers arranged in numerical order so the range is really simply the smallest value subtracted from the highest value so it's 149 take away 5 so the range is 144 okay that's really just the uh, difference between the highest and lowest data. That's what the range refers to. The bin or the subinterval width, because we're doing five subranges, when we say subinterval, we mean subrange or the bin width. This is kind of what we mean down here. So the bin width has to be 144 divided by 5. So uh, we can take our calculator and go 144 divided by 5, and we got 28.8. So the bin interval width is 28.8. So that's everything from the lowest number to the highest number. And that means we can all we can right, right away just start filling in our subranges. So the subranges go from 5, less than or equal, uh, hold on, not a very good less than or equal to sign, less than or equal to x. And then we add 5 to 28.8. And we have 33.8. And of course, we're less than 33.8. And so we go from 33.8, less than or equal to x, and then we add 28.8 to that previous total. We get 62.6. And notice that we have a greater than on one side, or sorry, a less than on one side and a less than or equal to on the other side. It means that if I, if, if for some strange reason we come across a value of 33.8, we need to know which bin to fit it into. We can't fit it into two bins, we need to fit it into one of them. So let's keep going. So we go from 62.6, less than or equal to, x less than, and we add 28.8, we get 91.4, and 91.4, less than or equal to x, less than, once again, we just hit the equal sign, 120.2, and finally, 120.2, less than or equal to x, less than, we should get what we want, 149 which is exactly equal to the last value. Now, um, notice that we have less than 149, suggesting that 149 shouldn't be included in the last range. Well, we can fudge this a little bit and make that one, that very last interval, less than or equal to on both sides, just for that last one. Um, now, that that was just a little side issue that that these two numbers are all we need for our subrange because we already know our lowest number. If we know the lowest number and we know the range, we know that we, we can divide by five intervals and every interval width has to has to be 28.8. Every subrange has to be 28.8. And so that means we add 28.8 to these lowest numbers to get these other numbers on the upper end. Now we, uh, we look at the median. Now, we said that there were 100 purchases. That means that there's rows of 10 here, right? These are, are sort of columns of 10 numbers. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. They're in numerical order. So this last one, this 50th number, should be on one side of the median. If we count 50 the other way, we actually end up at a different number we end up at 85 and so we average these two numbers the so the median is 82.5 oh sorry why did I put 0.4 82.5 it's halfway in between 80 and 85 okay 
the mode, well, the mode is the interval that occurs most often. I wouldn't want to go over these and tally up which individual numbers occur the most. In fact, that isn't really too interesting. The mode should be what comes out of this table. In other words, it ought to be the highest frequency of of the, you know, uh, the highest frequency of the subranges in this table. So, and the mode then would be the midpoint of that, and we haven't calculated it yet. So we're just going to leave that for a minute. We'll just go put that aside. The first and third quartiles, however, can be taken directly from here. We don't need to include what we've already calculated for the midpoint. Uh, I'm going to say that we leave these out. Actually, we should leave these in because we didn't directly use these numbers, did we? We, we use these two numbers to calculate a number in between. So these numbers can still be used for the first 50 numbers in the data. So that means that I can count 25 numbers this way. 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I get 47. I count 25 this way. 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I get a different number. So if I do 47 plus 51, and I divide that by 2, I get 49. So 49 is the is Q1. So Q1 equals 49. What about Q3? Well, we know what Q2 is. Q2 is the median. It's 82.5. But what about here? So we're reusing this number. Um, well, we never truly used it. So 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 115. And if we count the other way, we arrive at this other number, which is also 115. We'll just say Q3 is 115. Um, the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So Q3 take away Q1 is 115 minus 49, and that's 66. And the semi-interquartile range, the SIQR, is half that number. So it's just uh, IQR divided by 2, which is 33. The sample mean, we have, to, we have to go through the table to get that. The variance and standard deviation, once again, we go through the table to get that and have to plug in these formulas. So let's now um, evaluate the mode the sample mean, sample variance, and standard deviation. So if we look at all numbers less than 33.8, where do we land? Well, 33 is here. It's less than 33.8, and 36 is greater. So it looks like we go through 10, 11, 12 numbers. So, oh, hold on a minute. Um, what's the midpoint? Um, 33.8 divided by 5. Oh, sorry, not divided by 5, plus 5, uh, divided by 2 is 19.4. Okay, once again, I said there were 12 numbers less than 33.8, so the frequency for this category is 12. Now let's do the next category, 33.8. I'm going to do it this way, too. 33.8 plus... 62.6 in brackets divided by 2. You can do the whole thing at once if you use brackets. 48.2 is the next midpoint. And we're looking for all numbers between 33.8. We've used this number up. And we're going all the way to 62.6. 63 is too high. 60 is our last number. So we're going from, okay, so that's 10... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 is that frequency. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so 22 is that frequency. What about 62.6? 62.6 .6 .6 Divide that by 2. I get 77 as my midpoint. And now we're looking, we're starting from 60 and we're going to 91.4. 93 is too high, 91 is just under. So that's, okay, we're starting from here. 
that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We're counting the 91. So that frequency is 21. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going from 91.4 to 120.2. So 91.4 plus 120.2, 211.6. We divide that by 2, we get 105.8. Okay, and we count that frequency, all the numbers between 91.4 and 120.2. So we go, we're going from here, 93, and we're going to 120.2, so that's too high, this is just right. And so that's 10, that's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And this last one, 122. Point two plus 149 gives us 269.2. We divide that by 2. We get 134.6. And all right, so we were at, we went up to 120. Is that correct? Okay. That means we're starting from here and going to the very end of the data. That's exactly 20 in our frequency. And we can see from here the highest frequency is this fourth category whose midpoint is 105.8. So 25 is the mode, or well, 25 is the frequency, the mode we're going to report as being the midpoint, so 105.8. Okay. You can you can also say you know maybe mention the subrange, but this is I think this is the more important number. The sample mean now uh, we got to go through a few things. To get to the sample mean, we take this column, multiply by this column to get this column. This is M I, the midpoint of the ith interval. F I, the frequency of the ith interval. And this is just mi times fi. This is this column times this column. We're basically saying that 19.4 has occurred 12 times. We di it didn't really occur. I mean, that exact number didn't occur 12 times. But we're saying that the middle, we're treating this as though the middle value has occurred 12 times. And so we're just saying 12 times 19.4. So 12 multiplied by 19.4 is 232.8 and we keep going 48.2 times 22 is 1060.4 1060.4 thousand sixty point four a thousand sixty point four I'd like to line up my decimals if at all possible 77 multiplied by 21 1,617, we'll say 0 0.0, it's a round number anyway, 105.8 multiplied by 25, 2,645, 2,645, also a round number, but we'll put a 0, a point 0, 0.0 there. 134.6 times 20, gives us 2,692. 2,692. Once again, we'll put a point zero there. Now we have to find the total of this whole column as if we had took the trouble of adding all this data up, right? So what you end up with is not quite the total of the, all of these numbers, but a good estimate. So um, we'll just add them up. All right, let's start from the top. 232.8 plus 1060.4 plus 1617.0 but we'll just leave it at that 2645 I, I put the point zeros here because I like to show that the decimals line up 2645 plus 2,692. Of course, I could have added all these up manually, which is kind of the idea. This can be done without a calculator for sure. 8,247.2 plus 
8,247.2. But what's the bar x? Now I didn't really I didn't really have a place for you to put it, but the sample mean can go there. But we'll we'll just do this. Bar x equals sum of mifi divided by n, which is really this number divided by a hundred, right? So eight thousand. 247.2 divided by 100. Well, okay, that's just 82.47, isn't it? So if I divide by 100, I get 82.47, or roughly we can say 82.5. We'll keep it to one decimal. So our sample mean is bar x equals 82.5. So this is gradually being filled out. We need this number now to fill out this column. Now that we know bar x, we now need to take this number, subtract the midpoint, and come up with these numbers. Once we do, we have to square them, and then because it's only five numbers that we're squaring, we have to multiply by the frequency to you know, give them a little more weight and then we sum this column. We don't need to find the sums of these columns, just this one. So notice in this whole table we're only summing that column and that column. But here we're going bar x, so 82.5, take away the midpoint. So 82.5, 82.5, take away 19.4 is 63.1. We'll put that there, 63 decimal 1. Next one, 48.2. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go here and go 48.2, just substitute that number, and I got 34.3. Okay, keep going, 77. Now we just go up here, delete, 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 77, and it's 5.5. .5. Oh boy, this is, these numbers are getting small, but actually they're, they're going to go negative. Now we're going to do 105.8. And we get negative 23.3. The minus sign should go there. Okay, and 134.6 is the last one. 134.6 and we get minus 52.1. Now we need to square these numbers in order to put them in this column. So let's square them. So okay let's do it. 63.1 squared is 3981. I'm gonna just use one decimal. 3981.6 uh, by the way, I know there's some people are tempted to just round to the nearest whole number, but it does throw your numbers off. Uh, it's much better to keep as many decimals as you can, or as reasonably possible. I use one decimal because there's already four other significant figures here. But remember, this number, I mean, <clears throat> we've, we've already done some rounding for these, for, you know, generating these numbers generally including bar x and what I'd hate to do is to do too much rounding because when you round when you round too much you introduce an error and when you multiply a number by 63 for example you're multiplying your error by 63 so you'd rather not do that let's keep moving on 34.3 34.3 we square that we get 1176.5 1,176.5. Okay, 5.5 .5 squared. We get 30.25, we'll call that 30 decimal, 3. Negative 23.3, well, it's the same as positive 23.3 when we square it, and we get 542.9, we'll say. five. 42.9. All right. 52.1. Now, by the way, you, if you want to include the minus sign, don't forget to put it in brackets. So 
if you're going to do it that way, 52.1, I know I took a shortcut last time, let's do it properly. So if we do it, if we do it like this, the minus sign now is being multiplied and it's part of the squared term, which is what it should be. You're supposed to get a positive number. Here's what happens when you don't do that. Negative 52.1, and when I square that I get, look, look at that. What happened here? If you square a negative number, you're supposed to get something positive. Again, this is just a misuse of the calculator. The idea is you're supposed to multiply minus 52.1 times minus 52.1. Instead, you're doing minus 1 multiplied by 52.1 multiplied by 52.1. So 52.1 times 52.1 is a positive number times minus 1 is a negative number. So it's kind of like you're doing that. It's like you're doing minus 1 multiplied by 52.1 all squared. And of course, this is not the right thing to do. So the brackets obviously are in the wrong place. What we need to do, what we're aiming for, is to square the, the entire number. We're, I mean, the entire negative number. In brackets, we do negative 52.1, close bracket, and then put the square outside. So this is the wrong way to do it. Okay, so let's do it properly. Minus 52.1, close bracket, and then you square, and then this is what you should. This is what you're supposed to get. Positive 2714.4. So 2714. Four. Okay, so it's looking good. Now for this, now for this part, I got to multiply my frequency by my average, well, by the squares of my deviations. We call these, you know, uh, what we end up with when we total this has a term for it. It's called the sum of the squares, right? So if we have if we multiply this by this, okay, so let's do it. These are going to be even bigger numbers. So we got 12 multiplied by 3981.6, 47,000, okay, 47,779.2, decimal two. okay. What about this next one? 22 multiplied by... 1176.5 and I got 25,883 25883 we'll say decimal zero 30.3 30.3 multiplied by 21 636.3 that's a very small number 636.3, okay. 25 by 542.9, 25, oops, sorry, 25 multiplied by 542.9, and we got 13,572.5, 13,572.5, okay. 20 times this, this big number, so now we got 20 multiplied by 2714.4 and we get 54,288 and that's a whole number I'll put a point O there so now we got to find what we call the sum of the squares that's the basically I mean it, it sounds intuitive that these would be the sum of the squares but because these are the only numbers out of a hundred data you're not gonna you're not gonna add up five numbers out of a hundred data right to represent a hundred data what you're gonna do is you're going to multiply each of these each of these deviations these squares of the deviations by their frequencies to get these these totals of subtotals of deviations if you like and then once we come here we add up this column we get what we call the sum of the squares. Okay, so here we go with uh, just adding them up. 40,779.2, 
plus 25,883 plus 636, oops, 636.3 plus 13,572.5 plus 54,288.0, and I get 142,159. So this is 142,159. I'll put a comma there as a thousand separator. And now what we want to do is we want to find we want to find the variance. Okay. So hopefully this will be Okay, so we want to find the variance here. And here we go. We're taking this number a hundred a hundred and forty two thousand one hundred and fifty nine divided by a hundred minus one divided by ninety nine and that becomes one thousand four hundred thirty five point nine one thousand four hundred thirty five point nine Okay, but now what we got to do is we got to take the square root of that number. This is the variance. That's what we got. It's usually a big number, but the standard deviation is usually a fairly smaller number. And when we take the square root. We got need. We got to take the square root of this number here. So we'll do that, and we get thirty-seven point nine. So this is approximately. 37.9 as you can see 37.893 or 894 or something so you know okay so the sample variance this is the sample variance and the sample standard deviation getting these numbers okay and that's basically those two all right so there you go, and we'll just go back on that, and I guess that's the end of that video.